everybody. I'm doing a follow-up session for a client. We are going back. We are revisiting the Sophir race. And these are a race of ancient aliens who have a connection with our planet Earth. So the initial visit with them was me tapping into some very difficult history and transmuting that old energy. And so we're going to continue to work through it, okay? If you're interested in checking out that session, that experience, I'll put a link in the description. So I'm going to relax now, get tuned in, and let's see what we discover this time. Okay. Okay, all I can tell you right now, I'm experiencing energy, this has to do with my mind and my heart, and it's very loud. It's unique feeling. It feels like if the air could speak, if the air could have a body, it might feel like this when it touches your mind and your heart. I feel my mind and heart is touched by the soft hair race. And they're communicating with me in this way. What's interesting is I have images of elephants and loving family members, loving children, gentle giants type energy. Okay, the next thing, very feminine energy. Even the males have more feminine energy. It's all about nurture. The men nurture and the women nurture. They also feel as though they remain soft in spirit and childlike all through their lifetime. It's playful, it's lighthearted, but it does feel like the adults are guides and they work with the energy of nurture, men and women alike. It's very supportive of family and each other The next thing I experience is what is extremely cold air, but it is so fresh and clean. It's, it's like consuming all your vitamins for the day in a single breath. And I see an image of a mountain that's covered in snow. And it looks blue and white from a distance. I feel patient. I don't relate to time. I don't relate to having a busy schedule. I relate to free freedom of choice and movement. But it's instinctive inspiration to want to nurture. And to feel close with family members. What's interesting is I wanted to say family and friends, but there are no friends because everybody is family. Everybody is family. So as I tell you all this, again, I feel this discomfort that... Like, it doesn't want to venture into that conversation. I'm 
so I'm going to wait for a moment and I'm going to remain in this comfortable, energetic experience that is touching my mind and touching my heart. Okay, some type of gateway is opening up and I'm, I'm seeing it totally in a new way. And how am I supposed to describe this? Let's just take olive green color and then having beings that you can see through and there's males and females and there's a group of them. And they're see-through beings, but I can see kind of the outlines. And there's olive green color. And they're facing me and I'm looking in at them. <sighs> this is a complicated discussion. They're telling me information, but I'm not... I don't know what they're saying yet, so I'm just going to wait. It's like receiving a download of information. My my mind isn't doesn't know what it means yet, so I've got to wait until there's clarity about it. And there's some kind of insecurity, a feeling of timidness. And they don't want to talk about things that hurt. They don't want to talk about suffering at all. Like it just isn't a part of them to talk about suffering. So what I experienced in that first journey is the ultimate mortifying, unfathomable nightmare event. And they're still working through that energy and they're very uncomfortable about it. They're very uncomfortable about what happened. It's like one day somebody comes and all the animals are dead without any explanation, without any reason. And you see them all slaughtered in your streets, in your fields, all the birds, all the pets, all the wild jungle animals, animals in every part of the world and it's confusing it's sad it's concerning because we don't know what this reality is going to be like now that this extreme unexplainable event has taken place they show me that literally this scenario s somehow all the animals are suddenly dead and you feel a connection with your pets. You feel a connection with the birds. We have bird feeders. You feel a connection with the squirrels. You feel a connection with the bunny rabbits. You feel a connection with the horses. And they're all dead, slaughtered, like bloody and pulp-like. And it's, it's terrifying for a race of beings that focus only on nurture and love and that's all they think about they don't even fantasize about anything else they don't relate to anything else they're in such sorrow about this what i find fascinating is in this vision that we we could relate to. They aren't showing me that everybody is wiped out. They show me a scenario where only all animals are gone, but all the humans remain, which tells me that something of this kind happened with them where some type of extreme extermination takes place that not everybody is removed, not everybody is dead, but it's not copable. Like, it can't be understood it can't be it's in so much pain it's complete trauma it's complete trauma of their mind and their emotions to cope with this
But what's interesting is me coming to visit their collective, these spirits, it helps them to find an element of support. And that I am nurturing what they're going through. And they need a nurturer. They need somebody to help nurture them through this experience. It feels like I'm still communicating with the echoing memories of what had happened that still exists in time. That is a wound that's trying to heal, that's trying to to fr find freedom through healing, through nurture. I will say this is a big improvement from where I started. <laughs> All right, a new message. This is very exhausting. It's weighing heavy on my mind and I feel weight in my throat about it. And this is a concern because there's another race of beings and these are kind of, hmm. I don't want to describe what they look like. They wear clothes. They wear something that is a little heavier and formed, like, um, and it has sharp shoulders and sharp front back. It's, um, so it makes them look square, okay? And they also have a mask on their head. They wear something over their heads. So you don't see their face. You don't know what they actually look like underneath their clothes. You never see their eyes. You don't know what they look like. This race of beings is technological. Technological. The soft hair race is is sensitive, empathic, um, par a natural part of something more organic. So they could easily be wiped out. Because they don't think about war. They don't think about... They don't feel like they need to have a weapon because the idea never came to their mind. They don't... That isn't their identity at all. To protect themselves doesn't exist. It is really hard to understand what these beings' intentions are. Because they're kind of pushing their way here because they have a plan. They need something from the planet. It's not necessarily that the Sophia race is in their way. It's interesting because I say, well, isn't this planet big enough for the both of you? <laughs> like, isn't it big enough for the both of you? <laughs> oh. They are pretty nasty because they, it doesn't, that doesn't compute. It isn't whether the planet is big enough for them both or that they share. They if they feel inspired in their heart to take something or to kill something or to um, whatever that inspiration is, they just do it without thinking about, hmm, maybe we could share the planet. Hmm, maybe we could learn about the Sophia race and work with them. No, it's, it's not like that. And they're not opposed to chaotic choices of terror. They aren't opposed to it at all, but they also don't see that. They don't see it in that way. They see it as heart is is guiding me to do this. I do this. And they don't think a second thought about it because they're following their heart. 
But I will say the energy they express is pretty disturbing, gross feeling. What's interesting is I go to what is the reflection of this race and I just reach my hand to touch one of their hearts and there's this energetic fence and it zaps my hand <laughs> as I get close to touching their heart. So they are always in control. There's They are sort of like... There isn't anything that they will ever run into that they won't have power over. And their race makes sure of it. And it's based on survival. Survival of the fittest. These beings are incredibly advanced. And strong. And strong-willed. Without any emotional response. Like, hmm... I feel kind of bad for that. That doesn't exist in their expression. So they don't relate to that. And so anybody that isn't standing up to them is weak. <laughs> and that is something they need to work on. Not something that this race of advanced beings needs to work on. I'm really trying to understand what they have in mind for the planet. It's hard to make sense of. I just see the planet Earth and then there's the uh, black lines that go like meridians, um, ley lines. But they're going off the planet. And there's several rings, like um, encasements, uh, several encasements, um, layers, so to speak. So if I, here's the planet... You could say, here's a layer, here's a layer, here's a layer. And then through these ley lines, there's these black lines that go through all these layers that are um, off the planet. But they still encase the planet. Hmm. So I'm waiting. I'm just waiting for the next thing. So I go back to the soft here race and ask them, what now? And they're showing me that, that in time that they're, they've learned some important things from these beings. They always translate everything that is, that is into a good thing. What's interesting is they're emanating what is an angelic inspiration. This other race of beings is inspired like something chaotic. So we have, I don't know, love is also chaos, but you can imagine harmony and chaos, let's just say. So if your race is expressing harmony, this other race is expressing chaos. But they don't, it isn't defined. I mean, my spirit guides are saying not to define that as chaos. Um, define it as... What is life and death? So these other race of beings represent death. Is death a bad thing? And these other race of beings, the Sophia race, represents life. And so planet Earth received life and death through races of beings. And the Earth ha is lear has learned from these races of beings. And what their... Their energetic imprint that they've placed upon the planet still here. We're still working with it. But I don't, it's almost like when I go back to the soft hair race, I, I experience what is a brighter, sunnier day and that they never forgot. And the tragedy feels 
super transmuted compared to what it was even the second time in. It feels a lot better. And they don't hold any type of grudge. They chose to grow in harmony from it. They chose to grow in a healthy, beautiful, loving way from it. It's almost like these advanced beings of death <laughs> gave them new ideas on how they can advance their own race. And it showed them more than they were able to see before as a race of beings because this, these beings of death, what they were a seed that was planted into their collective learning. And from that seed, they took the experience and they advanced themselves. They grew from it in a really healthy and positive way, in a way of life and love. They feel like Palladian beings at this point. They feel like Palladian beings to me. They're just uh, emanating beings of light. What's interesting is I don't feel that I feel that there's a root connection with the earth, but I feel like there's other roots that grow beyond our planet. What, what they also tell me is that it's not just these beings of death that, that planted a seed into their race of beings. They also simultaneously planted a seed into these beings of death into their race just because this race created death experiences for them that were very traumatizing because of the relationship and interaction between the two races you can't give and not receive yourself so even though death created a very loud impact life simultaneously created the exact same loud impact and I actually see this race of beings of death are more, how do I want to put this? They aren't just so one-sided, I guess you could say. They still feel like uh, determined, powerful. But there's more, what I can only describe as a respect for life because they understand themselves and their purpose as death. They're more conscientious somehow. It's interesting, you could almost say they're more considerate. They still follow their hearts though. I feel the earth was blessed by both races of beings. Deeply blessed. And there's something about the timeline here that being introduced to the Sophia race, having an opportunity to go to that the energy of what they represent, actually transmute that, is a sign that there's a what could be an interlapping timeline between the Sophia race healing their suffering learning about the balance between these two races and what is actually happening here in our version of now. Why are we having access to this type of history now? Because it's time. And why is it now time for us to access healing of the Sophia race and an understanding of events from our past? Because we are, we are running into what is the record of revolving experiences. And what's beautiful is the Sophia race healing is also the human race healing. It's happening. It really is happening. It's a really big sign to me. So you can decide inside yourself which race you feel more of a connection with. So when you have death enter into your life, as in trauma, you experience trauma of some kind, how are you going to work with the seed that is planted? Are you going to grow with life 
or are you going to be influenced by the death side, the hardship? Because there's no doubt the Sophia race went through hardship, but they grew with life. So, all right, that's all I have to share about this. I want to thank you all so much for watching. And that was super interesting, super beautiful experience. If any of you are interested in connecting with me one-on-one -on -one for a psychic session, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I'm also on Patreon. I'm doing live streams there. You can visit me on Patreon at, also at Abby Normals Wisdom Quest. And I have two YouTube channels. Um, one of them is my Abby Normal YouTube channel and the other is Zodiac Energy Readings. All right, have a great day, everybody.